What is going on everybody? It is Tree from Tree Talks here for a brand new series on the channel that I like to call Jags Origins. Now in this video what we are going to do is we are going to document the life of either a current or former Jacksonville Jaguar from birth to high school to college all the way to playing for your favorite team, my favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars and today the first person that we are going to document is our leading receiver from the 2017 through 2018 season Keelan Cole and if you want a good story to start this series off this is the perfect one the kids have been through a lot been through a lot of ups and downs I'm excited to tell you guys the story and I hope you guys are excited to listen now if you guys do like this video idea and this series idea don't forget to drop a like down below so I know that you guys are into it let's try to get this video up to about nine likes so I know that you guys want another episode of Jags Origins also leave comments down below on who you think I should do next the more likes on the comment the more likely I'm gonna see it and the more likely I'm gonna do it so without further ado everybody let's get into the life of Keelan Cole now let's get into the story. Keelan Cole was born April 20th, 1993. Now Keelan Cole grew up in a semi-big family with four siblings growing up. And not a lot of his early childhood is known. I scoured the internet a lot to find some things about Keelan Cole's early upbringing. However, I couldn't find anything. But one thing that was known and one thing that has been true his whole entire life is that he wanted to be a football player. Keelan's dad was quoted saying, Ever since he was five years old, there was never any doubt in what he wanted to do for the rest of his life. Now, Keelan Cole attended Central High School in Louisville, Kentucky, where he won three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back 3A state championships. Now, Keelan Cole did not have much starting experience in football. In fact, he was only a two-year starter at the defensive back position, not even the position he plays in the NFL. He also played a little bit of wideout and a little bit of quarterback as well. Keelan's high school coaches really didn't even think that he was going to make it as a starter on their team, let alone, you know, be a wide receiver in the National Football League. Because, get this, the year before... Ty Scroggins, the head coach of Central High School, sent nine players to Division I schools. And you look at, like, a guy that has sent nine players to Division I schools, and you got a guy like Keelan who is significantly undersized. In fact, he's been undersized his whole life. He was even the smallest guy on all of his Little League teams. And you see this kid, and you're like, you know, he's not going to be anything like the sizable Division One athletes that I have bred here. You know, he's not going to play much. Definitely was not on Scroggins' radar early in his high school career. Now, in high school, before he got some time at defensive back, the only time he was ever on the field was to hold the ball for kicks and PAT. Bruh, if only they knew. Now, the only reason that I brought up that he held for kicks and PATs uh, late in the story is because I think it's a perfect analogy on how his coaches felt about him. You know, kind of a throwaway guy, kind of useless, wasn't really a guy that they could use on their team. Like I said earlier, again, they sent nine guys to Division I schools, and they got this guy that is no more than 140 pounds on their roster. So what do they do to get him on the field? They tell him to go out there hold the ball for the kicker, and then get off the field because you're not going to play much. Like I said, he did get some playing time at defensive back, but I think the whole holding the kick and holding for PAT is a perfect analogy kind of of his high school football career. He could not have been happy with how his uh, high school career did pan out. In fact, it really hurt him as far as playing at the next level, the college football level. And like I said earlier in the story, being at five years old, the only thing that you want to do is become a professional football player. You know, that football is all you know, and the fact that you just lack playing time and you were not recruited, it is hard. It is hard to go to a school that wants you and that you can play football. But he found a school. And that school was Kentucky Wesley. 
which is a Division II school not too far away from where he's from. That school has never, ever had an NFL player come out of it. Ever. Not once. Now, his drive to play football was there, and he was determined to make a splash on this team. When he showed up, he switched positions from what he usually played in high school, from defensive back to what everybody knows him now as a wide receiver. Now, he redshirted his freshman year, allegedly again for being too undersized for the program. Now, could you imagine being too undersized to play for Kentucky Wesley? And this is where the story gets good. So now that Keelan had his whole freshman year redshirted, he would go to practice and he would work his ass off. Caught the eyes of his coaches, just the grind and the grit and the determination that he had to be a good football player and to practice hard every day and to make not only himself better, but all the players around him that he's going against better as well. And Keelan Cole wanted the play time. He wanted to go out there and show what his high school was missing, show what they did not get out of him, and that was his athletic ability and his ability to be a fantastic football player. In fact, Keelan Cole is quoted saying, I knew that there was a senior in front of me, so once he bounced, I knew that I had a starting spot on this team. So I made sure that I worked hard every single day to earn that spot. And that is exactly what he did. Now heading into his sophomore year, yes, he did get the starting job, and he said that he wanted to go out there, dominate, and put up the numbers. And well, he did just that. Keelan Cole racked up 1,577 receiving yards, which not only led Division II, but led the whole NCAA. He also had 1,900 all-purpose yards with 17 touchdowns, which was a school record. Keelan was also voted MVP of the team, and all the locals were excited to see the progression of Keelan Cole. The kid went from a high school kid that was too undersized that just was out there to hold kicks and hold PATs to being the star of his college football team. Granted, it is a Division II school, but he went out there and showed everybody, hey, I was better than you thought I was. I know how the high school football system works. There might have been a little bit of politicking there that really uh, held him back, or maybe it was truly being undersized. But going to a college and doing all those numbers and proving all those haters wrong was exciting. And like I said, everybody was excited to see the progression of Keelan Cole. In fact, at one time, the new Kentucky Wesley Athletic Director, Rob Mallory, was interviewing for the job. And Kentucky Wesley School President Bart Darnold told him, We have an NFL talent on our hands. Now before this, Mallory was the head football manager at Notre Dame. So he looked at the school he was applying for and said, here at Kentucky Wesley, you got a guy that can play in the NFL. Kind of scuffed it off, kind of was like, no way, you know, this is not a big enough school. You guys have never had an NFL player. But little did he know. Now heading into his junior year, he continued to ball, racking up 1,300 yards and again 17 touchdowns, tying a school record. Once again, it was also named to the third team All-American team by the Associated Press. And heading into his senior year, he racked up 1,400 yards and 15 touchdowns and he was grabbing the attention of NFL scouts. Now. I think the main the main story in this story, if you will, I know a little bit kind of hard to understand what I'm trying to say, but I'll wrap it around and make it make sense. Now, I think the main objective of this story is is that no matter what people tell you, say that you're too undersized, say that you're not good enough, if you personally have the drive and you personally have the dedication and you're willing to put in the work, success will come your way. And that's something that I truly do believe and I think that's something that was in Keelan's mind he said that I want this I want this I want this I don't care that this school has never 
bred an NFL talent. I'm going to be the first. I don't care that my high school coaches thought that I was too undersized and really only threw me out there to hold for the kicker. I'm going to go out there and prove why I'm in an NFL talent. And he was. That's why scouts were coming to Kentucky Wesley games. Prior to this, scouts would never come to those games because there was never anybody on the roster that was good enough to be in the league. But Keelan grabbed the attentions of the scouts, and as a matter of fact, got an invite to the NFL Combine. Now the fact of the matter is this, is that if you are an undersized guy from Kentucky Wesley and you're competing at the NFL Combine and you don't put down jaw-dropping times in the 40 or if you don't have a great three-cone drill or if you don't jump very high you're not going to get really much attention at the combine and unfortunately Keelan did not put up that great of numbers at the NFL combine and like I said being from a small college and being undersized that's some things that some scouts are just gonna avoid and really not touch you you know and the next step in this story is the NFL Draft. So Keelan Cole, the guy out of Kentucky Wesley, is watching the NFL Draft, and as day one passes by, day two passes by, and day three passes by, and he did not hear his name get called once. Now that just has to be a bummer for a guy that just went out, basically broke all the receiving records for his college, really just made a name for himself out of high school from not being a true player, from not being a true talent on his team and his coach's eyes to going out in college, proving him wrong, getting an invite to the NFL Combine, and maybe even have the opportunity to get drafted, and his dreams of the NFL are crushed until his phone rings. And on the other line is Dave Codwell from the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars decide to sign Keelan Cole of Kentucky Wesley to an undrafted free agent deal. Now when he came to Jacksonville, the chances of playing time for him seemed pretty slim considering the fact he had four guys, at least at the time, that seemed like they were going to be in front of him. Allen Robinson, Allen Hearns, Mark Easley, and D.D. Westbrook, who we drafted earlier in the same draft that we got Keelan as an undrafted free agent. But Keelan did his thing that he always does. He worked really, really hard. He got a chance in the preseason uh, due to D.D. Westbrook's injury to be really the number one wide receiver in the preseason. And oh my god, did he go off. You guys remember his preseason? He was catching like 75-yard touchdown passes from Chad Henney. The guy that went out there only to hold kicks is now an NFL wide receiver. He worked really hard and he earned himself a spot on the roster. But again, the playing time for him seemed very slim. Because again, you had Allen Robinson, Marquise Lee, and Allen Hearns who were all going to be on the field more. Keelan would be on the field maybe every once in a while, but the chances of getting the ball were not very good. And then week one happens, and Allen Robinson goes down with a torn ACL. So he gets bumped up the depth chart. And then we head into later in the season. At, by this point, Keelan Cole is already putting up the numbers. And he's already having a fantastic year and is leading our team in receiving yards, I might add. But, Alan Hearns and Marquise Lee are out in the Houston game. Our three wide receivers are Jadon Mickens, Jalen Strong, and Keelan Cole. And Keelan Cole was by far the best one on that uh, trio of wide receivers. And now Keelan Cole, we can confidently say might just be the best wide receiver we have in Jacksonville but a lot of people want to say that you know that Marquise Lee maybe is the best or Dante Moncrief or DJ Chark a lot of people this season are counting out Keelan Cole I wouldn't count on a guy that has that much drive and that much determination to be the best that he can be I would never count him out I think that he might again lead us in receiving yards and I think 
by the end of next year, I don't think there'll be any doubt who the number one wide receiver on the Jaguars depth chart is. And that was the first episode of Jags Origins, The Life of Keelan Cole. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I really enjoyed making it. It's a good change of pace from the usual either news update videos that I do or, you know, top tens or game recaps or game previews. I think it's a pretty good content and I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, don't forget to like the video down below. If this video gets about like 9 likes, I'll know that you guys like it and that I will make another one in the near future. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to check the links down below. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Treep Talks. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Trayvon Pixley. I mean at Trevin Pixley, excuse me. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and as always, you guys have a great day.